There we go. I think that's it. And again, I'll show you the graphic here right quick since I wasn't shared earlier. So you've got this uh, graphic here and this shows the percentages. I won't dwell on it too long, but we'll go over what the numbers say here. So what the numbers say, 23% uh, of US adults said that while they like superhero films, they're getting a little tired of them, up 6% percentage points from a 2018 survey. 29% of Marvel fans also expressed fatigue with the genre. The 2018 survey did not pull Marvel fans specifically, but 21% of self-identified superhero movie fans said that they were getting tired of the genre. So the number is going up. And uh, Dega says, Boomers had a ton of real movies in their memory. To compare modern superheroes stuff with that catalog is like comparing ice cream to Brussels sprouts. Well, I think it's a matter of taste. I mean, I really like superhero movies. But the ones that have been coming out here in the last few years, yeah, I, I, I don't enjoy them very much. Vienna Wolf says, yeah, I've been... I find I keep watching movies made before 2010 or even 2000 and before. Well, I do think that the older stuff generally has, uh, uh, I don't know, they honestly, they're just written better. They're smarter writing. And I think, I think in modern movies, there's just such a reliance on the CGI to sort of carry the story and carry the movie. And I think, and I don't have any proof of this. And this is something I thought about doing a video on, but I really think that movies are written the way they are now, and they have all these plot holes in them, and they just seem kind of lazily written, really. And I think part of it is because Hollywood just kind of has this belief, and I think they may be right, that people just aren't paying attention, because people... You see it in theaters, and I see it when I watch movies with my friends or with other people. They'll be sitting there spending half the time on their phone, and they're not really even paying attention, you know, and they'll pay attention when there's an explosion, you know, or a fight or something like that. They'll look up and watch for a minute or so, and then when the action's over, then they go back to their phones, and they aren't really paying attention to what's happening between, like, the action scenes, the big set pieces, and... I think that's part of why so many movies are so poorly written now, because there's no real thought or effort put in by the writers to make this stuff make sense or hold together because they feel like, well, why bother? Because no one's watching anyway. All right. Now, uh, the shares of Gen Xers and baby boomers have said the same each. Uh, who said the same each increased eight points from the 2018 poll. Millennials and Gen Zers showed little change in opinion. The share of adults who said they don't enjoy superhero movies and don't see them in theaters ticked up slightly from 23% in 2018 to 26% this year. The share who said they enjoy superhero movies and will continue to see them in theaters stayed flat at 41% since the last survey. At 59%, millennials were the generation most likely to say they enjoyed superhero movies and plan to continue seeing them in theaters. Okay. They used charming practical effects, too. Yeah, they used more practical effects back then. Which just, it took more work. I think they put more work into it back then. Gen Y is also in there, usually listed as those born from 1975 to 1989. Well, I think, I don't know, uh, Gen Y and millennials are kind of the same thing aren't they? I mean, I kind of thought they were. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. The, uh, the debate over whether or not superhero film fatigue exists dates back nearly a decade. Seemingly every time a superhero movie underperforms at the box office, analysts and observers wonder if it will finally be the time Hollywood reigns in its superhero output. So far, that hasn't happened, and if anything, it's been the opposite. As studios double and triple down on superhero content as one of the few remaining genres that can still reliably fill theater seats. But I don't think it's even, to me, it's not even the film content so much as it's just the streaming shows. You know, they they want people to subscribe to these streaming services, and Disney's the main culprit here, obviously. They just, they just put out so much crap. So much crap for those for all those Marvel streaming shows and Star Wars streaming shows. And mostly, I mean, at best, they're mediocre, if not just not very good. Let's see. Uh, Gen Y 
Theana says, Jen Y remembers a time before the Internet became the standard in American homes. That's one of the bigger differences. OK. All right, now that's never been truer than in the pandemic era. Superhero films are what consumers are showing up to see with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and Black Widow claiming the top three spots at the domestic box office this year. And of course, this was in early December last year before I think No Way Home really had hit theaters yet. Yeah, and they say here's Spider-Man No Way Home set a new record for advanced ticket sales on Fandango. Disney continues to build up its Marvel slate, scheduling seven more films for release through 2023, with even more titles reportedly planned through 2028, as well as a plethora of TV shows designed to continue the Marvel narrative on Disney+. Plus. There is little sign that Marvel will suddenly stop being a deeply lucrative property for Disney, but the studio has to consider if it's at risk of overplaying its hand. Yeah, I think they are. A non-trivial number of moviegoers movie goers say they're tired of these films and that group is likely to continue getting bigger, especially now that the studio has pivoted to a largely unfamiliar set of characters. The Avengers aren't coming back to save the day, right? Okay, let me unshare that one. There's some more stuff here with the uh, morning consult surveys I thought was worth taking a look at. Okay. Is Gen C too cool for Marvel? Now, this is the audience that these Hollywoods, basically that all entertainment outlets are pandering to now or trying to get uh, the Gen Zers. So is Gen Z, Gen Z too cool for Marvel? Just 9% of Marvel fans identify as part of the generation. Data indicates millennials are the driving force of interest in Marvel and superheroes. And I'm not going to go through the whole article, but again, I thought I'd look at the, the graphic they've got here. So demographic makeup of Marvel fans. So according to their survey, uh, Marvel fans are 53% male, 47% female. The age, uh, Gen Zers, just 9%, just 9%. Mostly millennials at 40%, then Gen Xers and baby boomers are about even at about 25%. Uh, race and ethnicity, uh, of course, it heavily skews whites. 64% are white adults, 18% Hispanic, 13% black, 5% other. Uh, household income under 50K, I mean, I don't think that's that important to go over. And uh, political party, Democrats, 41%. Uh, in political independents are 33% and Republicans 27%. What the numbers say. So Marvel fans are slightly more likely to be male than female. The demographic is also overwhelmingly white, while 18% of fans are Hispanic and 13% are black. Fans of Marvel comics, films, or TV shows are most likely to be millennials, Roughly one quarter of the Marvel fan base are baby boomers and Gen Xers, while Gen Zers account for just 9% of Marvel fans. More than half, 55% of Marvel fans, have a household income of less than 50000 a year. They're slightly more likely to live in suburban areas, 42%, than urban, 34 or rural, 25%. And among political identifications, Marvel fans more likely to be Democrats at 41% ahead of independents, 33%, and Republicans. And I think, I think it would be worth noting, this is probably, this is the films when we're talking marvel we're talking marvel films marvel studios this isn't marvel comics i don't think because i don't believe for a minute that marvel comic fans are 47 percent female uh, millennials are by far most engaged with superhero fandom and uh, then it's got it broken down by generations let's see so Watch Marvel movies, 44% for general adults, 55% for Gen Zers, 66% for millennials, and 43% for Gen Xers, baby boomers, 20. Watch superhero shows, 42% for all adults, 50 for Gen Zers, 60% for millennials. Millennials just lead in all categories. 
Uh, Gen Xers, 41%, then 24% for baby boomers. Read comics. Now, here's an interesting one. Read comics. 22% of adults, 30% of Gen Zers, 39% of millennials, and 60 or 6% 6 for baby boomers. Uh, I just, I find it hard to believe it's even that high. Uh, and I'm guessing a lot of these people are saying they read comics because, you know, they've read a trade paperback or two at some point not because they're collectors or they read them regularly uh by comic memorabilia uh 17 percent for all adults 21 percent for gen zers 33 percent for millennials 14 percent for gen xers two percent for baby boomers and millennials again are way ahead in terms of cosplaying and attending comic conventions so really, it's the millennials that are their core audience. Yeah, like you say, Theon, it's woke white males. <laughs> That's who's doing it. Okay, and let's see. I think there was another one or two of these articles, and then we'll wrap up here. And yeah, let me look, look, look at that one right quick. So. 